Priming a population for the crime of menticide begins with the sowing of fear. When an individual is flooded with negative emotions, such as fear or anxiety, he or she is very susceptible to a descent into the delusions of madness. Threats real, imagined, or fabricated can be used to sow fear, but a particularly effective technique is to use waves of terror. Under this technique, the sowing of fear is staggered with periods of calm. But each of these periods of calm is followed by the manufacturing of an even more intense spell of fear. And on and on the process goes. For as Mirlu writes, Each wave of terrorizing creates its effects more easily after a breathing spell than the one that preceded it, because people are still disturbed by their previous experience. Morality becomes lower and lower and the psychological effects of each new propaganda campaign become stronger. It reaches a public already softened up. While fear primes a population for menticide, the use of propaganda to spread misinformation and to promote confusion with respect to the source of the threats and the nature of the crisis helps to break down the minds of the masses. Government officials and their lackeys in the media can use contradictory reports nonsensical information, and even blatant lies, as the more they confuse, the less capable will a population be to cope with the crisis and diminish their fear in a rational and adaptive manner. Confusion, in other words, heightens the susceptibility of a descent into the delusions of totalitarianism, or as Mirlu explains, logic can be met with logic, while illogic cannot. It confuses those who think straight, the big lie and monotonously repeated nonsense have more emotional appeal than logic and reason. While the people are still searching for a reasonable counterargument to the first lie, the totalitarians can assault them with another. Never before in history have such effective means existed to manipulate a society into the psychosis of totalitarianism. Smartphones and social media, television and the internet, all in conjunction with algorithms that quickly censor the flow of unwanted information, allow those in power to easily assault the minds of the masses. What is more, the addictive nature of these technologies means that many people voluntarily subject themselves to the ruling elite's propaganda with a remarkable frequency. Modern technology, explains Mirlu, teaches man to take for granted the world he is looking at. He takes no time to retreat and reflect. Technology lures him on, dropping him into its wheels and movements. No rest, no meditation, no reflection, no conversation. The senses are continually overloaded with stimuli. Man doesn't learn to question his world anymore. The screen offers him answers, ready-made. But there is a further step the would-be totalitarian rulers can take to increase the chance of a totalitarian psychosis. And this is to isolate the victims and to disrupt normal social interactions. When alone and lacking normal interactions with friends, family, and co-workers, an individual becomes far more susceptible to delusions for several reasons. Uh, that comes from the Academy... Academy of the Academy of Ideas. Thank you for watching this year.